Real fellowship's going to take a lot of time and effort. It's just the way it is. We've been working through A Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren and pulling out some of the best bits of that and looking at God's purposes for our life. And we've seen that God's purpose overall is for us to be devoted to him, that we've been planned for God's pleasure to live that out. But secondly, he's formed us for his family to be part of it and to play our part in it. And we've talked about some of the ways that we can do that. But I want to talk today about uh, one passage in particular, Ephesians chapter 4, and pull out some of the things that are there and some other ideas that are going to help us understand the real time and effort that it's going to take and what are some of the characteristics that we need to put on in order to build the body up. And, and you might call it building real community, if you like. We're in Ephesians and chapter 4, and we're going to start at verse 1. Ephesians 4. Therefore... I, the prisoner in the Lord, urge you to live worthy of the calling you have received with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope at your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. Now, grace was given to each of us according to to the measure of Christ's gifts. For it says, when he ascended on high, he took the captives captive, he gave gifts to people. But what does he ascended mean, except that he also descended to the lower parts of the earth? The one who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens to fill all things. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, equipping the saints for the work of ministry to build up the body of Christ until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of God's Son, growing into maturity with a stature measured by Christ's fullness. Then we will no longer be little children, tossed by the waves and blown around by every wind of teaching, by human cunning with cleverness in the techniques of deceit. But speaking the truth in love, let's grow in every way into him who is the head, Christ. From him the whole body, fitted and knit together by every supporting ligament, promotes the growth of the body for building up itself in love by the proper working of each individual part. You can see there that Paul's got this same image of the body that we've been talking about that you see in 1 Corinthians 12, 13, 14, that you see in Peter, that you see elsewhere, and, and in Romans 12. And that he's talking about every part of the body doing its work. We're not all gifted the same and we're not to be jealous of each other. We've seen that already. But there are some characteristics in there that really do uh, shape the way that our fellowship should function. And that that are uh, qualities that are really going to improve and connect us and help us to grow ourselves. That are all characteristics that flow out of God's nature and that a life he's calling to, but which really have benefit in the group. The first one is honesty, where to speak the truth in love. Uh, notice that it's in love, but where to speak the truth. Honesty is vital. Uh, and so often um, we, I mean, I guess, yes, certainly in saying no tell lies and and make up stuff and gossip when you're not even sure of the facts. That's certainly part of it. But speaking the truth in love means to say something that's hard sometimes. It means that it, we're going to be honest with each other about you know, some of the struggles and difficulties, but also I mean, from our own point of view, but also to say something that might need to be said that you know, there are things and going on in people's lives or ways that people are relating, others are relating, that you go, someone needs to say something about it, but not me. Why don't we speak? Well, some of us are prone to speak and we just go in all guns blazing and, and, and stuff. And that's a problem. You've got to remember the in love part. But you've got to speak the truth in love, that we're called to overcome our fear. The fears that we have of uh, <laughs> up, upsetting the apple cart, you know, upsetting the boat. Well, I was afraid of that. You think, oh, I'll just let it pass. Don't worry about it. Just, just we'll get on and stuff. Where when that thing, that issue, that person or the way they're behaving might be actually mean the whole thing does come apart in the end. So, so that's, we can't worry about upsetting the cart. We've got to sometimes go in there. 
but also we might be afraid for ourselves about their anger, that they will disagree, we don't like it. But I think often it just comes out of apathy that we don't care enough about another person to point something out. You know, it might be as simple as, you know, your fly's undone, but it might be the way that you interact with people, it's obnoxious, it might be lots of other things. But we're called upon to speak the truth in love. We're told in the Proverbs in uh, chapter 24, 26, that true friendship requires honesty, right? And honesty means that we don't necessarily want to get hear what we want to hear, but we're, we're told the truth in a way that cares for us, that's respectful of us. But that's the first thing, is to, to be honest, right? That truthfulness is to mark out our fellowship, and that's going to build the body up. Second characteristic I want to play is humility. He starts that way, doesn't he, in the chapter. You know, in the, um, with all humility and gentleness, uh, with patience, bearing with one another in love, make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Humility. Humility is not necessarily putting yourself down, but it's thinking of others ahead of yourself. It's saying, how can I, how can I be of benefit to the group? How can I look after this person? How can I make sure that their interests are served? That it, humility is something that is, well, it's part of the characteristics of Christ, and it's something that a life clothed with Christ will put on. It's the opposite of pride, that thinking I'm better than everyone else, and I can do whatever. Uh, and, be, and I can say whatever, whenever. In fact, that's going to help us with this humility in speaking the truth in love. I'm not doing it to destroy you. I'm doing it to build you up because I want the best things for you and for our fellowship and for our church. And uh, the gentleness, that's in there as well. That's another characteristic that builds community, that's going to build the body that is essential to the way that we relate to each other. So honesty, humility, gentleness. There's also... In one respect, courtesy, I guess that's kind of related. You don't see it so much here in individual passages, you know, in this individual passage, but um, th there's a way of relating to each other that's, that's, that's loving and honest and caring, right? That's courteous, so it's not big noting ourselves. I mean, that's, that's pride. It's just the way that we relate is good and wholesome and constructive and gonna build up the body just by the way that we are that we're not gruff and you know that bristly exterior that you know, pushes in and all those things uh, another thing that that builds the body is i don't know how to phrase it uh, maybe uh, confidentiality kind of heads towards it but but even the word confidentiality is, is a troubling word for me but it's the opposite of gossip there's gossip and divisiveness that people have in the church, and, and we can have in any organization for that matter, that the Bible keeps speaking about. And we're not to do that. Titus chapter 3, for example, uh, you know, you've got to warn the divisive people, those who are coming in with stories and making stuff up. That's not to say don't point out the truth in love. There is a time when the person might be, you know, might be the lone voice saying, here's a problem and it needs to be aware. That's not the same as being divisive. That's the speaking the truth in love. Um, but the divisive person, you know, the person is always dividing people against each other. Oh, you know what so-and-so did and things like that. Uh, and that we're not to do that. that that's going to be the opposite of the kind of characteristic that's going to build up the body and build that true community and build that fellowship. So there's that. And there's also frequency. Frequency. We can't do any of this without the time that to be there with each other the people who are seeing each other infrequently really can't have this impact on each other's lives in fact when the new testament church formed in acts chapter 2 they met together daily in the temple courts and in each other's homes i don't think that that's necessarily prescriptive of what every christian has to do all the time but what is prescriptive is hebrews chapter 10 and 25 where it says do not give up meeting together if some in have burnt, but do it all the more as you see the pro day approaching, the day of Christ's return. More and more our heart should be with the fellowship of believers, thinking, how can I be there and making, making the fellowship a priority, be it church, Bible study, whatever connections you have with other believers. Are you prioritizing their life and organizing your life around it? 
uh, one of the things that I think we're we're um, we're following our society in at the moment is um, we, the latest invite is is the most exciting thing, and I'm going to say yes to that at the expense of my regular commitments to whatever that might happen to be, but church and the fellowship included. Whereas we can say to those people, well, why don't you put your party on a different day? And if we let people know ahead of time that we're a Christian and what our priorities are, and they can see it in our life, then they'll be careful to make their uh, events, parties and stuff on days that aren't going to clash. And certainly we shouldn't be doing it ourselves. You know, I'm turning uh, 50 in a couple of years time. Uh, you know, don't plan my 50th on a Sunday, right? Because I've got to be with God's people, not just because I'm paid as the minister, but because that's my priority. I have to be there for them. And so frequency is something that we're called to as well. And frequency means all these other things. We're going to see them and, and uh, we're able to have those opportunities where we can be honest with each other, where we can be humble with each other, where we can be courteous and uh, not divisive and build each other gentle with each other. As we do that more and more frequently, we're going to build the body of Christ. It shows our commitment to Christ. It shows our commitment to each other. And so what are the things there out of that list that you need to work on? What do you struggle most with? Is it speaking the truth? Maybe it's speaking, maybe it's doing it in love. Is it humility? Is it gentleness? Is it courtesy? Is it that gossip? Uh, is it that I just am not committed and I'm not frequent? Uh, they're all things that we need and we need to grow God's church. We've been formed for God's family and that's like the secondary purpose under the first one, which is we're to be devoted to God. We plan for God's pleasure. And so our life of worship is going to be one where we're building these things more and more into our fellowship. And it just makes the church and, and Christian fellowship so much joyful and, uh, and worthwhile when those things are the marks. Why don't we pray? Father, we thank you for your body, the church. We thank you for the blessing it is that we have local fellowships, uh, all kinds of different organisations and denominations around the world that know and love you. And Father, we pray for uh, our church at St Barnabas, for other churches around where people might be part of that, uh, who are listening, that you might grow them, help us to play our part in the body, to figure out how we fit in, to be humble in our attitude, to not be afraid to speak the truth that needs to be spoken sometimes, but help us to do that in love, help us to be gentle, help us to be courteous, help us to be uh, not gossiping and causing divisions, but building unity. And we pray, please, that you'd help us to be pro uh, frequent, committed to fellowship, and seeking every opportunity to build your body and bring encouragement and life and to play our part. We pray, please, that we would not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but more and more we would meet together as we see that the Lord Jesus' day of judgment is coming. We pray that this might be our commitment. We pray that you might help us to use those times to encourage and build each other up and to strengthen each other's faith and to grow your kingdom and body. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, God bless everyone. Catch you for church on Sunday and then back for another Devotion Monday. God bless.